I wanted to show a um, quick example of how to do uh, reflection angles off of a mirror using Fusion 360. I had a um, project where I needed to do this, so uh, I hunted around the web a bit and I really couldn't find anything that addressed this particular problem. So the problem I had is I wanted to be able to change the angle of a reflective surface. So this square here, a rectangle, uh, represents a um, first surface mirror. And I wanted to be able to change the angle of that mirror and have the corresponding reflection of an input uh, source of light be properly reflected at the right angle. And so this would allow me to understand uh, the relationship of the mirror position and also the relationship of the uh, input to output angle. You can change either the input or the output angle or you can change um, the reflection surface. So how do I do this? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use sketch objects in Fusion 360. Um, right now I've got a sketch that, you know, uh, I, I've created this sketch and we can go through and edit it and take a look at it here. You can see that if I uh, change positions, um, the, this angle here will change. But what I want to do is build a new one from scratch so that you guys can see how I did it. So what I'll do is I'll create a new sketch. So we'll say create sketch and we'll probably hide the old one. And to start with, I'm just going to draw a line. And it's for whatever reason, at least to me, it's easier to draw a um, uh, non vertical or horizontal line. So I'm just going to draw a line at an odd angle, um, something like this. Okay. So I'll hit the checkbox there and I'll finish the line. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to set a center point for that line. So I'll sketch a point. And in Fusion, if you allow the cursor to track, you'll see a um, delta appear or a center line or uh, center point appear. So I'll click that. And now I have a center point between the two edges of my uh, sketch line. And so the next thing I want to do is if I try to go and move this now, um, what I'll see is that, you know, it'll move, but it's kind of like freewheeling in space. So what I want to do is I want to fix this line. This is going to be the first surface of my mirror uh, to this center point. And the way to do that is to use these constraints over here. So if I choose fix unfix, and I select that center point. Oh, look at that. It automatically selected the last thing I had. So I'll unfix that. And then I'll fix this guy. So we'll say fix unfix. And we'll select that guy. Let's see. Oh, looks like I didn't do it. Try that again. Maybe click him. There we go. So he'll turn green. So notice that little green circle. And so now if I move this line, the line will stay fixed on that center axis. Okay, so that's the first thing I got to do. Now the second thing I need to do uh, is build a um, backside to my mirror. And so to do that, I'm just going to sketch around the first line that I've created. And I'm just going to create kind of an ugly sketch. But I'll go ahead and close it off. Ah, there we go. And we know that it's closed because the shape here um, will fill in. And that's how you know that these things are closed. Now I can still move this thing, but you can see that there's all sorts of weird constraints in here. Um, one of the reasons for that is this right angle constraint, which we can delete. Um, but the problem still remains that if I move this thing, it's not going to make much sense. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say that this line, so I'm going to use these constraints here. I'm going to say that this line, if I use the parallel function, I'll say this guy should be parallel to this guy. And then I'll say that, um, this guy, let's go over here and say coincident. This guy should be coincident with this guy. That didn't work. Perpendicular, there we go. This guy should be perpendicular to that guy. So now we have a right angle there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose parallel. And we're going to say this guy should be parallel to this guy. So now I've got a rectangle which approximates my mirror. And if I move the corner, I can move the mirror. Now that's well and good, but notice if I slide this thing out, it's changing the um, thickness of my example mirror. What I'll do to stop that is I'll set a dimension, uh, which will constrain this thing. So we'll set it at something like, oh, that was the wrong dimension. Try that again. We'll click uh, this guy and there we go. And we'll say like three millimeters. Okay, so now what should happen is if I try to grab this thing, it'll stay the same size. At least um, on the thickness, it'll stay the same size. 
If I want to change the um, size, uh, like the width of the mirror, what I'll do is I'll just set another dimension. This time we'll set it from here to here. And we'll move that dimension over there and maybe make it 30 millimeters. Okay. So now what should happen is if I move this thing, um, it's going to stay exactly the same dimension. You can see it's a lot tighter in how it wants to move now. So I have a little bit less play, but that's all right. We'll keep rolling. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I need to create my, my uh, input light and its reflection, but I really need to have a reflection plane. And the weird thing is, is that I would assume an input light angle, I could use this as a reflection, but it seems like I need something that's um, perpendicular to this side. So what I'll do is I'll sketch a, a new line and I'll say, okay. And then I'll say that this line is perpendicular. So we'll use that tool and we'll say this guy is perpendicular to that guy. And so now what will happen is if I move this um, mirror, that center line will stay perpendicular to the mirror. So the last thing we got to do is we have to draw our input and reflection light. And so in order to do that, I'll create a new sketch line and I'll draw from the outside to my center point. And now what will happen is if I select this line and select sketch mirror it'll ask me what object I want to select and I've selected this line right here and then for the mirror line I'll choose this guy and hit OK and that didn't seem to work we'll try that once more sketch mirror objects we'll clear that out and choose this guy and then mirror line will be that guy there we go and so now what should happen is if I move this guy that guy is affected on the output, and then if I move the sketch itself, the reflection is also affected. Of course, the last thing I might want to do is, oh, so this is something I should probably point out. Notice that now that I've come to a um, uh, parallel position, it creates a lock on that, a, a constraint, so I'll delete that constraint, and then we'll be able to move it. Um, the last thing I might want here is a um, angle between these two values. So to add that, we'll just add a dimension, uh, one, two there, put our angle, and then we can still adjust our input and our output. Oh, kill the angle tool. There we go. So we can adjust this guy. Oh, it looks like it locked this. So if we switch that over to driven, now we can set our angle here, or we can set our angle there. So that's it. That's how you can create a accurate reflection plane uh, using Fusion 360.